I think sometimes people think that making a project looks like this. But it's really like this. I set out to make this corset, but there was an issue. I bought the 1860s sewing kit, and I bought the 1880s pattern. The construction of these is not the same. And somehow I thought that a corset for this shape would somehow be okay for this shape, which is the general idea I'm going for, and was originally set in the 1870s, but then was actually filmed in like the 1900s. None of which relates to an 1860s corset. But I decided to make that kit work anyway, and here's what happened. In case you skipped past the intro, here is the 1860s kit that I got from Red Threaded. And here's the pattern that doesn't even go with the kit, but is probably closer to what Anne Shirley would have worn. Coutil is just Coutil, so, uh, so far so good. Here I am marking all of the elements on the fabric, and cutting the pieces out. So let's sew these together and see what the heck we're doing! I always mark the stitch line as well as the seam allowance, that way I always know exactly what I'm supposed to be pinning and where I'm supposed to be sewing. I'm using a serger for finishing off seam allowances, and yes, the thread is brown because I don't have any white right now. <laughs> I'm just hoping I have enough tape for the boning channels. And I did. Oh, that was such a relief. <sighs> we have hit yet another snag, my friends. These bones are too short because they come from the 1860s kit. So there's lots of shorter pieces. I can attach them to each other, I thought, maybe with some duct tape, but no, that's just gonna be bad. What's our alternative? Ta-da! These are large zip ties. We can get a whole pack of them. This was 50 on Amazon for like $10. I will save you maybe for something someday in the future, but this is good enough. The metal things at center front are called a busk. It's two pieces here. You've got the back part and you've got the front part. And you basically just stitch to here, stop, stitch here, stitch here, stitch here. And that leaves little holes for you to stick this through. So now I'm going to stitch around here to keep it in place. And then to figure out the placement for the other side of the bosque, you do some marking with a pencil, line everything up and then mark it. And then you use the stabby thing to make holes. It's also called an awl. Nobody told me that this was going to be actual murder, okay? No one said, oh, you're going to get poked a bunch and you're going to bleed on it. So first you stab it with this thingy. Then you use these things. So then you impale it and then you whack it. I definitely got some much needed angst out by inserting those grommets. So now it's a somewhat wearable thing, and now it's a good time for fitting. Once I figure out how to actually lace it. This is my second try on. This is as tight as I can get it. It's not bad. I feel really comfortable, actually. The only thing that's still an issue is this area where I fed babies. Things tend to gravitate more towards the ground now. I think I'm just going to stuff the cups. They did that back then. They're like trying to get down to my waist. Just literally stuck two socks in here. I could take cups in more, but I think that that would just reduce the hourglass look. Yeah, there's definitely enough of a lift here. This is cool! It's like starting to look like a thing! Okay, for all of my ADHD folks out there, this is the hardest part. You got past the hardest part, right? Which is where you don't even know if it's actually going to come together and the end is in sight. And then you can just think about trim and that can motivate you to the end. So now I'm going to go in and I am going to top stitch these seams so they lay nice and flat. I just happen to have a lot of this. This is going to be the binding. I don't know what it is, but like once you put the thing together, you, you can't really tell the difference between the top and the bottom. It's very, very weird. And then hopefully I'm going to put some nice lace around the top because this is really pretty and I want it there. Here it is on the edge. Obviously the stitching isn't perfect, but then floop, and then it's gonna get folded over like 
Take that. Yay. Once again, is my stitching perfect? Heck no. Perfection is stupid. So apparently my bones needed to be significantly shorter. And the reason why that is is because when you stitch down the binding, things get shorter. And also, you don't want to be stitching into plastic. I'll show you what happens when you do that. Don't force your machine to do this, it will hate you. Apparently, this matters. I'm not exactly sure why, and I think it gets attached to the seam allowances. Apart from that, I think the rest of it is magic. And then it was time for me to do some hand sewing so I could actually fidget a little bit. And after adding the lace, I was done. Some things I learned. If you make mistakes, you can still make it work. There are usually some hacks you can use that don't cost a lot that can help you to get it to work. But mostly, it's okay to make mistakes. And while the process can be frustrating, very frustrating, it doesn't have to be perfect for you to love it. People aren't perfect. People have never been perfect. Our bodies are all different and they always have been. Our sewing is never perfect. Maybe it's time to pull out something you thought was a failure and put it back on. Keep going, my friends. If you liked this video, you might also like the other two that I've made in this series and follow along with the playlist.